Howdy folks, Rob Maximum RD back again and I just figured I'd go ahead and make this video for you because I'm doing a procedure anyways and I thought well it might be useful to someone out there. Okay so here's the deal that you're looking at the EVGA GTS 250 video card uh, very generously and graciously given to me by my longtime friend uh, Al. Uh, I've known known him for a very very long time and uh, he recently well actually not recently it's been a little while now but he did an up upgrade to his computer and uh, because of that he forwarded me this card right here and I have actually had it running in my PC for some time now it is great awesome card but I did recently have a little bit of a problem with my computer nothing to do with this card but uh, I just had to take some parts out swap some things around figure some things out and uh, this is replacing my uh, 8800 uh, GTS uh, and it's a very nice card but here's the thing I figured that I might as well show you while I'm at it now if you've ever encountered a problem and I actually had this with my older card my 8800 G GT um, where I found that just about anything I ran outside of the operating system any game it didn't have to be graphically intense or anything like that but I found that uh, the fan was just, and again I'm referring to my 8800 card, was just spinning like crazy. You could uh, hear the increase in the uh, fan activity uh, very much so from just when the operating system was sitting idle. And at first I thought, well, you know, maybe it might have to do with some really graphically intense games that I was running. <laughs> yeah, right, I don't really run graphically intense games. And I pretty much noticed it. It just seemed to be any game I would run or any any type of program or editing suite or anything that required um, any type of uh, graphical assistance outside of a just normal operating system um, function calls and things like that and I thought you know it wasn't doing that before why why does it seem to be having such trouble uh, you know throwing some uh, graphics around why is it making so much noise why is the fan speeding up so much etc and uh, then it occurred to me that actually since I had uh, built the machine which was like five years ago or so now it um, actually had not ever been really cleaned or anything like that since that time. Now we're in a non-smoking household. We don't have any pets or anything like that. So it's not something that really occurs to me. You know, if we had pets or we were in a smoking household, um, it's probably something I'd be doing once every six months to a year, you know, <laughs> for sure. But uh, anyways, I had taken out the 8800 and looking closely at the fan, and again, uh, referring to my other model, it was even much more worse than this one. Uh, and it was caked on with basically all kinds of dust and particles and debris and things like that. So what basically was happening was the card was overheating. It wasn't getting the proper airflow and it wasn't, um, it just was uh, working harder to do what it needed to do. And as, you know, as soon as the temps uh, increased in the uh, card, of course, the fan would kick in and start revolving faster and faster and faster. It would sound louder and louder and louder to eventually it sounded like a jet engine. And uh, that was the problem. And once I actually did this procedure that I'm about to show you, and I put the card back in, that was before receiving this replacement card from my buddy Al, um, it was perfectly sil silent after that. It was back to normal activity. Whatever game I threw at it, whatever graphical intense application, uh, I threw at it nothing. The card didn't appear to increase in uh, in its uh, noise levels or anything like that. So, so this is about cleaning cards. And uh, as any of you who know anything about uh, cleaning components in your um, PC, you typically want to use a can of compressed air. 
obviously. You would use a can of compressed air, blow all the dust out, reassemble everything. I don't have a can of compressed air, so I'm showing you what I do under these circumstances. Now, some of you are going to go, whoa, hey, that's a, that's a bit extreme there, and, uh, and you know, there might be some issues with uh, static coming off of the, the brush, etc. You know, a lot of these things are overblown, and if you just take some sensible precautions and just use common sense. Uh, I've done these things. All I can tell you from my own personal experience is it hasn't caused any problem and has actually worked out and in, in, uh, um, resulted in the, uh, in the performance and uh, getting the results that I had intended. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Of course, I never tell anyone to do anything. I just to show people what I do and what works well for myself. So here we go. Now what I'm going to do in lieu of a can of compressed air, I'm going to use this baby right here. Yes, just your regular uh, vacuum, home vacuum cleaner. This is actually a, take a quick look here, it's mounted on the wall. This is a home vacuum, central vacuum system. Now, I'm, actually, I'm in the same room as the unit itself, so when I show you this procedure, it's going to get really loud. <laughs> All right, so keep that in mind. You might want to turn down your speakers when I do it. So the other thing, and I'm just going to rest the camera here while I show you a couple things. Hopefully, there won't be a problem. Okay, so I'm going to be using this brush right here. That's your standard, you know, uh, attachment right there. Now, some of you might have one that's uh, uh, much like this except it's completely round. Uh, we don't have the round attachment. This is the next closest brush that we have that's also the smallest and has some bristles on it. So I'm just going to attach that to the vacuum right here. Okay, so that's firmly attached. Now the other thing, the other thing that a lot of people, they don't take into, whoa, sorry about that, don't take into consideration is when they do this procedure, now obviously I'll be turning this on in a moment and I'll be brushing over the uh, the fan grills right there, fan blades I should say, um, and then for good measure I'll also do these uh, grills on the side uh, just to suck out any other dust or debris. But what a lot of people don't keep in mind when they do this kind of thing, and uh, the same can be actually said for compressed air, especially if you're using it on your CPU fan and fans with smaller components. You know, they have ball bearings inside, and although they can take a lot of pressure and they can take a lot of wear and tear, obviously, running all day long, they're not designed for your fan to be rotating at the speeds that something like a, a you know, a central vac or uh, shop vac or any type of vacuum system is going to uh, add to the fan. When I run that, it's going to end up running this fan much faster than how it was ever intended to be done. So I do want you to notice that when I am vacuuming the uh, fan blades here, that I'm also holding the fan in place so that it, it doesn't actually rotate while I'm doing the procedure. It's just a measure to, uh, you know, decrease any um, extra strain on, on the uh, ball bearings and things like that, just to save a little wear and tear, a little bit of extra safety. As for static and things like that, as I said, I'm not too wor worried about the uh, brush attachment there. I have the card lying on this uh, anti-static bag right here, one that you would also, you know, might use for shipping the product and keep out the uh, static on it. So that's not a problem. And uh, yeah, there we go. I'm going to do it now and I will uh, hold the fan in place as I do it. And I guess I got to figure a way to prop you guys up here. So just bear with me for one moment. I'm going to prop this camera in place position. So because you know, here's the sadly I only have two hands and uh, <laughs> I just cannot do everything. So let me prop you up here. All right, so you're looking at me now. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing. Hopefully, that's clear to you and just show you what I'm doing. And I don't know how well you can get in there, but hopefully, it's clear to you that there there is. You know a small layer of dust on the blades right here. I also see a couple 
dust bunnies right inside of there you may not be able to see that uh, but it's very clear to me there's definitely a couple uh, large dust particles in there so uh, yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and proceed now I'll turn it on now I would normally do this while it was lying flat on the anti-static bag just so you know okay but uh, for purposes of demonstration I'm doing it a little differently so I'm going to turn it on. It's going to get really loud. The talking will stop. I know. Thank God. And you can just see what I'm doing. All right. Here we go. Prepare. Turn down the speakers. Turn down your headsets. All right. Here we go. As I hold the fan in place, It's very hot in this little laundry room when that, when that central vac is running. So let me grab you right here, take you back down to the card. Now if you saw earlier, I think I can get in closer now. It's done a really fine job on these fan grills. Pretty much removed the entire layer of dust. And of course I vacuumed in there and in the side here where I clearly saw some uh, dust uh, particles build up is all gone all clean and there you have it that's the method and once again that is uh, you know I'm not gonna say I recommend it uh, definitely I mean if it's clogged with the dust where you're looking and go oh my god it's just it's caked on dust and grime then yeah I sure I'll recommend this um, again you would be better off using a can of compressed air and holding the uh, fan blades in place as you, you spray uh, that's always your best option to use a uh, compressed air I uh, in you know if you don't have any compressed air and you really want to get the job done and get it thoroughly done then that's how I go about it use the old vacuum with an attachment just like I said maybe lay it on an anti-static bag and also um, be sure to hold the fan blades in place while you're using the very strong suction so it's not uh, putting too much stress and wear on your fan uh, forcing it to rotate beyond specifications so that's uh, pretty much the same procedure that I did back with my 8800 card which was a lot more dirty than this one for sure but I figured I had taken my machine apart I had corrected a problem uh, in my tower so I figured well before putting it together why not do the procedure again just to get that slight layer of dust off and show you guys all at the same time so that's it just a little uh, tip and again I did this originally because I had noticed my card was just 
going crazy. Uh, it was behaving in a manner which it had never done before when I originally uh, installed it. No matter how graphically intense the games I played or uh, video editing I did or applications I ran, the card was always perfectly silent and I just noticed that it started getting louder and louder and louder over time. And as I said, that was due to uh, dust and grime and layers of of um, crap basically caked on and causing the card to overheat so any little uh, any little bit of graphic intensity uh, intensity that it was called to uh, handle was causing it to overheat even more causing the fan to blow higher etc etc you get the picture so that's it a uh, little PC tip I guess you could call it uh, thanks for watching it's very hot in here I'm sweating to death <laughs> so uh, buy yourself some compressed air I, I highly recommend it if you don't have it Rob Maximum RD out thanks for watching my little PC tip there bye Ooh, nice and clean going back in the machine